thing, it's tough to keep it from looking like a gimmick sometimes and keep it genuine. Even if you've built it specifically for this band to look a certain way, you don't want it to look like you built it like that just to bring in fans. It, you want to make it... It has to look like you built it like that because that's what you wanted to do, because that's what you enjoy, rather than just putting it on just to make a buck on the side. That's interesting. Now, the question for you, Spider, then. What would your take be on somebody like a band like Guar? Right? Guar you say was kind of their thing. See, Guar is, is, is an interesting case because they, they're definitely over the top and they're definitely like very, very, uh, I don't want to simply say theatrical because there's so much more. They, they spewed like gallons and gallons of, of just liquids out in the audience and things while they're doing the shows and, and people love that kind of thing. But I have to wonder sometimes, I mean, how difficult was it for them to get started with kind of a cult background? And and like how many people had to catch on to that kind of thing for it to become its own mythology, kind of. And that's what it is. It's it's, its own thing. And they've, I, I'm sure they enjoy doing it. I can't imagine that they wouldn't. They've gone so far with it that when one of their band members not too long ago passed away, they gave him a Viking funeral and everything with the little burning ship mm-hmm. and all that. And it's it's interesting that you would think if you didn't really know them that they did that for publicity, but they didn't. They, it was really heartfelt kind of thing for them because that's what they did. The music the, the music and the imagery, it, it intertwined and it wasn't just necessarily for them to sell a bunch of stuff. It was for them to have fun and to get the audience involved. And that's the other half of it. If, if it's if the image that you're portraying is just to involve the audience more then you also have to make sure that you've you're doing it in a certain way that they do feel involved that they do want to be involved with it and rather than it just seems like you're trying to pull them in when they don't want to because then again it starts coming off like it looks like a gimmick and that you're just trying to make a bunch of money off of album sales or or you know whichever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so hold that thought, guys. Yeah. Hold that. I gotta take a small little commercial break, so when we get back, we'll talk about uh, one of your musicians, okay? So hold that thought. Don't go away, guys. Be right back with more Jeff, which we have not even introduced him, who he <laughs> is, or what he, what company he represents, so we'll do that right when we get back. Well, that was some boring music. Spike? Come on, where's the Justin Bieber? Where's the Katy Perry? Where's the Fallout Boy? Noddle, you have witch powers. Turn him into a chipmunk and feed him to the owl outside. I will do no such thing. We're here to talk about our website. HomeCanineNeutering.com What? No! InvaderPet.com Where people can check out our comic strips or locate bookstores selling bookmarks with our comics on them. So, listeners, want to see comics of me, Noddle the Witch, my pets Kaylee Cat and Spike Beagle? Go to InvaderPet.com and check us out. Seriously, though, you guys really have a canine neutering website? Wednesday, June 29th on Let's Talk About the Music, meet Italian guitarist Mirko Filacchioni and hear songs from his latest EP, In Guitar We Trust. Tune in from 8 p.m. to midnight to hear it live at letstalkaboutthemusic.com. Magical Things offers fantasy art for festival and everyday living, featuring the fine arts and craft creations of Marjorie Delaney on practical printed products such as journals, mugs, costuming, wearable art, formal wear, and accessories. We also carry a line of magical supplies, including candles, oils, herbs, and limited ritual items. All items are created in a scenic studio space in Culpeper, Virginia and available throughout the world online, as well as at festivals and events. Magical Things offers custom creations too, such as costuming, illustrations, and more. Come visit us at MagicalFantasy.com. Hey everyone! Want to know how you can help Let's Talk About the Music stay on the air and earn some VIP privileges at the same time? Go to patreon.com slash L-T-A-T-M radio to find out how you can get involved. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. Let's talk about the music. 
Let's Talk About the Music is wanting your sponsorship to help support local independent music and musicians worldwide. We have different levels of sponsorship for everyone, including up-and-coming bands and musicians, to give a little more boost to your promotions. Let's Talk About the Music is also looking to podcast live from your music-related special events, shows, and venues. For more information, go to letstalkaboutthemusic.com. Overflowing, have you seen it? Understand me and my lingering neuroses I habitually, and I'm wishing you were here by me Disrespect and blessings flying with my broken wing My thoughts are melting, can't stop dwelling, stop it, can you hear me? Music. I'm Shelter's host in Tacoma, I, and he's Spider over there in You stumbled Ohio. over me there for a second. I stumbled? No, I didn't. <laughs> Almost. I, I, well, it's kind of difficult to do that in Ohio. 
<laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's flat enough that if you stumbled, then you really had to be talented. Okay, true, true. And that was <laughs> Nine Mile Roots on the Floor, one of Jeff's musicians, bands that he is uh, promoting or managing or whatever. What do you do? <laughs> well, first so, off, you, you yeah, first specifically, off, for first, first off, first what off, do you do? For, for, first I ask off, myself that a lot, too. <laughs> who are you and what is your company's name? That we should start with first, then Tell us what you do. <laughs> yeah, let's let's start from <laughs> from the top here. So I am Jeff Shad. I own and run Montauk Music. It's a music publicity, social media, and marketing firm. Um, so those are the core things that we focus on. Um, in our interactions with clients, we often find ourselves going into management type stuff and advising them on on different business aspects that are outside of that um, just because of my backgrounds and my experience. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's really what we do. But it's, it's focusing on the PR, the marketing, and the social media. So I'm trying to go out, get the band's music and their message out to the people and get people engaged with it and get people to come to shows, get people to buy albums, get people to follow on social media and engage them. So that's, that's really boiling it down what Montauk music is all about. Nice. Now, where did the name come from? Montauk is a place on Long Island in New York that uh, I did not grow up in, but mm-hmm. I have explored every square inch of the place. It's on the ocean. I'm a surfer as well, so I, I surf there a lot. And over the course of you know my first 26 years of life, I spent so many, so many, so many, you know, days of my life there that it's just, it's in my soul and it's a very special place. So it just felt right for me to name my my company after the place that I I love the most in the world and and just think about going to all the time. So it just makes me happy to say the word and gives me a good feeling and that's that's where it comes from. Awesome. Cool. It's a happy place. Yeah. (laughs) So, how many bands do you represent? Uh, at the current moment, I'm working. I'm working with um, five bands, and it usually I usually try to keep it in that range um, of active bands that I'm working with, just because if it gets out of that, it's it's a little too much. And I, I do have people that I work with, um, mostly in in different capacities, because um, we we can do all sorts of things like a marketing agency can do. So we can do websites and we can do, um, you know, imaging work and all that good stuff. So I, I tend to keep a team around me that, that handles that stuff that I don't really want to focus on when I'm doing PR and, and social media stuff for my clients. But, um, you know, I keep it, I keep it lean and light just because I, you know, I don't, I don't want to say I'm a control freak, but I certainly, I want to make sure that every experience that my clients have with me is positive and driving them towards, you know, the, the goals and objectives that we've agreed upon when we start working together. Cool. And um, so if I'm able to do that, then I'm happy. And, uh, yeah, so it's about five at a time. And over the course of, you know, the almost seven years I've been in business, I've worked with, I don't, I think it's like, it's 30 some odd uh, bands now. So. Wow. Getting up there. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, now we we're talking before the show started about how the music industry uh, changed for what it was until now. So when you came on board and doing this, how much did it change for that way your business actually bl- bloomed? Oh, it's I mean it's amazing how much it's changed because you know you used to have a, a pretty set formula for I think going out there and, and trying to get your bands noticed. You know you're trying to play your local shows and hope an A&R rep from a label shows up and that they like you. You're sending out demos to the labels. Um, you're, you're playing kind of a specific set game back then, back before, um, you know, music went on the internet and everything's accessible and everybody can, you know, have their own voice out there and, and be their own entity out there. Um, you know, when it was just labels and then you went to Tower Records and you got your CDs, you had a certain approach that you followed and now it's different and, that has actually allowed me to start a company because with all these musicians that, you know, there's talent there. There's, there's, there's real artistry in what they're doing. And 
they have that ability to to be 